Hey guys, Femica Master back here with another video for you. And this is a supplement to my last video about putting a gigabyte of RAM in a Latitude C400 and an Inspiron 2600. Now, of course, these are standard SD RAM modules. They will fit in anything. Well, today we're going to have a look at what will they work with. This is my first computer ever. In fact, I think I posted a video about this not too long ago. This is an a Dell Inspiron 8100. And uh, despite its appalling condition, it does work. It does work very well, in fact. This password isn't right anymore. I don't care about that. You can look at that all you want. And that neon green sticker. Uh, yes, I got this computer with Windows 2000 on it. Yes, it now runs XP. Yes, it's full of viruses because it's my first computer. The hinges are gone. This one is broken. There is plastic that's supposed to be here. It's not. One of these fans doesn't turn anymore. This hard drive is begging for death. That gets hot. There's no screws holding any of this together. This drive doesn't work worth a darn. This one won't read any disks. This battery doesn't hold a charge. None of those Dell buttons work up there. The quick set buttons, I should say. Those PC card slots, only the bottom one works. The hard drive pops in and out at will. Infrared port doesn't work. The, uh, the modem port doesn't work. Only the headphones jack here works. The firewire is dead. I mean, this computer is scrap heap for anyone else. But this is my first computer, so we're going to keep it. There are no screws holding any of this together, but there would be one screw holding this memory door in. And of course, normally, this would come up with it. It currently has 200 or 512 megabytes of RAM installed, which would have been the maximum from the fact, or the maximum from the factory, I think it was 128. But 512 is a heck of a lot for Windows 2000. And that's what mine came with, was the max. Let's see if I can do some acrobatics like I did like I didn't do last time. So these are standard 256 modules, 256 megabytes. They're nothing special. These are fairly common uh, SD RAM modules. They're made by Samsung. And they are 133S, 333, 542, whatever that means, but these are the same. So you think, okay, well, these probably work. Well, let's stick one in and find out. And I'm not going to bother putting this mess back on. I'm going to take these right back out as soon as I'm done with this segment of the video. So, figure out where the charger on this thing is. Over on this side. Plug that sucker in. We're not going to boot into Windows. We're just going to go to Setup and have a look. Hmm. Love that screen. 1400 by 1050, I think this is. Very high resolution, especially for its day. Configuration. So one module gives me 512, which is exactly what it should have. Mm, that hard drive brings back memories. In fact, it's impressive that that hard drive is still alive. So we're going to put the second module in, and this should give a gigabyte just by doing, you know, the maths. 512 plus 512 is 1,024. So it should be 1,000 or something, right? Wrong. Well, this, I already know this doesn't work because this is based on the Intel 815 chipset. And good lord, where is the charging connector on this stinking laptop? This is based on the Intel 815 chipset, which only goes up to 512 megabytes. It'll still boot with a gig installed. You just can't use the upper half of that memory. Oops. Loose connection, I guess. Oh, it's blinking a code telling me that there's... One module is not seated properly. That is not an uncommon problem. It's just... I'm going to bother to pause the video for that. 
pull them both out, put them back in. Duh. I put it in an angle, and it wasn't. Both had an angle. Hold on. Okay. The modules were installed at a weird angle, and that's why they weren't working. So let's take this back. Oh, it's doing the same thing. You get the idea. But it's Intel 815. It will boot with a gig installed eventually if I sit here and play with it enough. But it can only address the first 512. So there's no point in having two modules in here. So it's just a pain in the butt to do it. Well, actually, in this, because it's got both modules just sitting right here out in the open, it's actually nice and convenient to do that. And it's also got this over here, which is a weird combo modem Ethernet card. So you can't really replace that and keep your LAN, which is kind of stupid, I think. But I guess for some people, the Wi-Fi would be more useful anyways. But... Yes, this machine, the Intel 815 chipset in general, does not work. It will not work with a gigabyte. You can get it installed, but it'll only recognize 512 no matter what you do. That's just a limitation of the chipset. So let's check out the next machine. Our next candidate for upgrade is this lovely Dell Inspiron 4100, which I just got in the mail today with the 2650s that I mentioned in the last video. And this uses SD RAM as well, and it's also a Pentium 3 class machine at 1 gigahertz. I don't know what chipset this has. I just asked him to throw this in because it wouldn't add that much to shipping. So, we're going to take off this panel on the bottom, which has two captive screws and one non captive screw. That's kind of dumb. But this accesses the PCI, mini PCI module, the modem, and both memory slots, which is very convenient. But we'll, we'll see in just a second. Now, I don't know how much RAM was actually in here before, but I just took both modules out and stuck a 512 in. It doesn't matter that much when you think about it. So this charger is all the way on the other side. It's weird. This has the same bad battery problem as the 8100. That came right up with 512 installed. This hard drive is shot, by the way. So this is, you're not gonna see it boot into anything even if I wanted to. You can hear that that drive is junk. It does detect all 512. So, let's stick the other one in and uh, see what she does. And this should be a gig now. Kind of loose modules, loosey-goosey in there. Doesn't matter that much, obviously. It worked just fine that time. So it comes up, like I said. This is kind of what the 8100 would do. It would just tell me, oh, you need to go into setup. And then it shows me, oh, you got 512, right? So, it's certainly taking its time. Amount of system memory has changed. Oh no, it supports a gigabyte. So this is, in, this is based on Intel 830 as well. This is the nice Dell setup too. But this is based on Intel 830. So Inspiron 4100, yes, you can use the 512 modules. You can have a gigabyte in this computer, which is convenient, I guess, because this has uh, dedicated video. So that, that, that makes this a good candidate for upgrade. Good work, Dell. Oh, and before I forget to mention, this has a spot for a wireless card built in. I, I may do that. I may put a wireless card in. I may put the gigabyte of memory in this because this has dedicated video. The 2600 doesn't even, doesn't have a mini PCI slot and it doesn't have 
dedicated video. This has a Radeon 16 megabytes, which is pathetic, but it's better than Intel 830, I think. So we'll we'll see regarding that. Now let's I'm gonna finish putting this back together and grab the next and final candidate for upgrade. Now this last notebook I do have to change chargers for. This is a Dell CM1 power supply instead of the PA6 and PA9 that I'm used to using. And that's because this, well, it's not a Dell. It's a Gateway Solo 3300. The 3350 is the, is the same. Oops. This has kind of wonky hinges. Uh, there is a Dell part number for this as well. There is, I think it's the Latitude 400, L400 or something like that. But even though this laptop has a good battery, uh, it's not charged. It hasn't been charged in a while. I like this computer. It's very small and light, and I wish I had a 3350 because it's ni this nice blue color and it's got a nicer 1024 by 768 panel and it's got ATI Rage graphics instead of Magic Graph 256 AV whatever junk this is and instead of a 500 me 750 megahertz CPU I think it's got a gigahertz or something like that faster CPU but they both suffer from this problem which is that they have one module for RAM which means that you're limited to 256 because they're so dims. But are you? We have a 512 module. We're going to try sticking it in. Now, you may remember this machine from a video I did a long time ago called Sad PC4. This has bad fan bearings in it. And uh, you'll hear that in a second. I wanted to make sure this computer worked before I go trying to upgrade it. Yeah, those are those fan bearings. Not seeing a lot happen on the screen. I am seeing the hard disk light flash though. It could just be booting the windows. Maybe. Well, it's not frozen. I'll have a look. We'll we'll see. But uh, this this we may we not be we may not be doing this today. After playing doctor with this stinking computer for I don't know maybe thirty minutes, the battery started flashing one light, and I don't know how well you can see. But it started bulging and getting very, very hot in this one corner. So much that it's actually cracked the plastic. It's fine on the other side. It's nice and cold. The same temperature it should be. And it's not bulged anywhere. But on the right side, it's very, very hot in this one specific spot. And it's bulging outwards. And it's cracking the plastic. So... I'm going to take that as a, a sign to stop. I couldn't even get a picture on an external monitor, let alone the internal LCD. So, I guess it's dead. Uh, I guess I'll be on the lookout for a new one. Haha, <laughs> fun. But, next video we're going to be looking at the 2650s, hopefully. So, hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.